You're dreaming. You're taking a chance. What's that like to be able to pay off your house? What's that like to be able to pay off your car? I know these may be simple dreams, but what's that like? 15 minutes later. They did it, folks. They made a real-life squid game, and it is so extra, I, I just can't. Why did I squat? This is so dramatic. Now, when they announced that Squid Game The Challenge was coming to Netflix this month, I figured the whole thing would be this completely tame mix of Squid Game games, Total Wipeout, and the Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. And if you got eliminated, it would be the equivalent of getting gooped at the Nickelodeon Awards. But holy sh**. Was I wrong? This Squid Game comes in with the aura and extreme intensity of the actual Squid Games. And even though people's lives aren't actually on the line, for many, it kind of feels like it because one, they've watched the show and production goes a little far trying to make this actually feel like the show, and two, there's a grand total of a life-changing $4.56 million on the line for the winner. That's right, just like the show, there are 456 players in this game, and each represents $10,000. So, whenever someone gets eliminated, that's 10 k that gets added to the bank. Now, right off the bat, we meet a few of the players. There's this dude who's here with his mom. There's this dude whose plan is to make friends with everyone right off the bat, so no one wants to kill- I mean, eliminate him. And of course, there always has to be a villain for the season. I think I always will be competitive because Jesus had to compete. That means I have to compete. Oh yeah, we all know how hard Jesus went on the field. And the moment that you can control your mind and become mentally strong, then you understand that sympathy it's only a weakness. Which I believe is also something that Jesus would definitely say. But after a few introductions, we get to our first game. Which, if you watched the original show, you'll know is Red Light, Green Light. And when I say this is an exact replica of the set, it's an exact replica. They even got that giant girl singing her absolute banger. And you know what happens next. The song begins, people run, and if you move after she stops singing, you're eliminated. But this is where things get kinda messed up. Because elimination doesn't just mean you get tapped on the shoulder and escorted out. No, they have to simulate you getting shot, but instead of being covered in red, you get inked like it's a game of Mario Kart with your best friends. Which only gets more jarring when they really try to mirror the original show by setting a compilation of people getting inked to Mozart's Requiem in D minor and it's... I just, well, couldn't take my eyes off the screen. Oh, shit. Like, I was kind of horrified, but also entranced? And things only amp up from here, cause people start getting wild, and sometimes it felt like too much. Like for example, up next, as everyone who watched the show would know, is the cookie game, where the remaining 197 players split into four teams and all get assigned a shape. Either a circle, a triangle, a star, or an umbrella. They then have to carve out the shape from a honeycomb without breaking the shape in 10 minutes, or be eliminated. Now obviously the umbrella is the hardest by far, so no one wants that. But to make things more interesting, they then have the people at the front of the lines come out and choose which shapes they want their teams to work with. If they don't unanimously agree in two minutes, all four of them get kill- I mean, inked. And after two rounds of people refusing to back down and all being eliminated, the next round of people to choose for their teams include our villain number 432, and also this guy. You don't give in. You've got it. Okay, this dude's gonna crack harder than the umbrella honeycomb he's about to make everyone in his line cut out. And I mean, it just 
get so much worse. Like, I dunno where they found this man. Check out how he describes himself in his pre-show interview. I remember I used to wet the bed a lot. I used to cry when I was taken away from my mom. I am extremely gullible. It is a problem. Oh no, this is... This is gonna be a disaster. So immediately, my guy Spencer comes in crying and throwing up, which has the other guys going... <laughs> And this is just a nightmare for everyone in line four. Like, Spencer comes in with the negotiating tactics of... Please, man, please! Oh, <laughs> just God. Do you want to eat at my restaurant for free? Every week, you can come once a week, okay, it's okay, free! Just, fine, J just stop! And well, just like everyone expects, Spencer crumbles at the first sign of pressure. However, not before he makes one last impassioned speech. I'll pick this frickin' umbrella if you guys promise me and I know you all see me. This sounds so sexual, everyone's freaking said it to me, but spit on someone else's cookie, please. <laughs> yes, Spencer's plan is to guilt the others into helping the people with the umbrella shapes, which is great and all, until after he locks in his shape, the announcer promptly says, Each shape will play independently. Players will not be permitted to assist other players. I've made a huge mistake. But when I tell you, I was rooting so hard for Spencer to succeed, even though he absolutely douses his tin and spit like, yikes, and even though the whole time he's burping and nearly vomiting like he's Robert Durst from the Jinx. <laughs> But holy are these people rattled. And I don't just mean Spencer who has to watch as the people he's doomed to the umbrella honeycombs get inked one by one. No, even the people who succeed are so shell-shocked. And I mean, this guy only had to do the circle. Player 141, pass. Which reminds me of another reason why this show is so extra. They make the people just hang out like they're corpses. Plus, apparently everyone has to react like they've been actually tagged when they're eliminated, as if it were some sort of contractual obligation or something. Oh, and of course, for this challenge, they also set up another montage with dramatic music, like it's the sinking of the Titanic or something. Speed up the graphic. Fully together for 300 years in the land of Tirnanog. Now, sadly, with one last shocked burp, Spencer breaks his cookie. <gasps> they say they're games, <laughs> but they're not. Y'all, the drama is real. I honestly don't know how to feel sometimes when I watch this show, but I also can't look away. It's so extra. And the people, my goodness! Like, they add a new twist to the game called Tests, where it gives players an opportunity to help or eliminate other players. Like, these two, for example, get to give someone an advantage for the cookie challenge or straight up eliminate them. They decide to eliminate the most popular guy in the room, number 200, and, well, karma, karma. But then they have this phone come out, and this guy right here is dead set on eliminating the villain number 432. So naturally, he clings to this thing like moss on a Mississippi tree stump. However, things get ugly when his reward for answering the phone is a gourmet lunch of two hamburgers and fries. And it gets so ugly that people just straight up steal his food. I mean, they have been serving them dry, kinda yucky food so far, but dang, this lady is trash. You're on TV stealing a whole hamburger like it's nothing. I was shook. But yeah, this guy then picks up the phone a second time, and he has to then convince someone to take the phone from him or be eliminated and, well, well, suddenly no one wants to talk, and now this man's not only lost four million dollars, but his hamburger too. So yeah, this show kinda has me in a grip, but I'm not even sure if it's in a good way. It's often uncomfortable in its greediness and a mimicry of a show where people are brutalized for money. Anyways, the show continues for a couple more weeks and I for one am still going to check it out. So if you're a fan of the Squid Game drama, I'd recommend at least checking this one out. And at least there is one important lesson we learned at the end of it all, don't squat in a game of red light, green light. Why did I squat? 
so that's it for this video on Squid Game The Challenge's first few episodes. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, comment your thoughts on the series so far down below, and subscribe to the channel for more content. And until next time, Bachelor Fan Take out.